Our next presenter is a professor of mathematics at Harvey Mudd College and past president of the Mathematical Association of America. Francis Sue studies the application of combinatorics, yeah, good, all right, geometry and topology to problems in the social sciences. Earlier this year, Wired Magazine named him the mathematician who will help you fall in love with numbers. Oh, what a great quote. But guys, can he do it in five minutes or less? We'll see. Please welcome Dr. Francis Sue. Ricardo is the son of immigrants. He's the first in his family to attend college, and he showed an aptitude for math at an early age. But lacking a mentor to guide him, he majored in something else and spent his 20s and his 30s in an unsatisfying career. But at age 40, he's back in college studying math, and even though it's hard being in courses with kids half his age, he says he's having the time of his life. Vicky is an astronomer. She's one of the many involved in the discovery announced just yesterday of colliding neutron stars 130 million light years away. It was detected because gravity waves, invisible mathematical structures predicted by Einstein a century ago, came rippling through the universe. Vicky is able to see the unseen because of mathematics. And Christopher is a prison inmate serving a 30-year sentence for a string of armed robberies. Now, it's easy to judge his mistakes, but I wonder if anyone saw his potential. On his own, he's been purchasing math textbooks to teach himself calculus. Why is Christopher sitting in a prison cell studying math that he won't use in a career for another 20 years? Here's why. Because mathematics is for human flourishing. Math helps people flourish. Flourishing means to live well. What is the well-lived life? That's a question that philosophers have asked throughout the ages, and Aristotle had an interesting answer. He said, people flourish when they exercise virtue. And I want to convince you that mathematics helps you build virtues that will serve you well no matter what your profession is or where your life takes you. And mathematics is motivated by basic human desires that are marks of human flourishing. For instance, we all love to play. Think of how we play a game. Play involves whimsical exploration or struggle within some structure. And in math, we play with patterns, investigate their structure, rel relish the struggle. Math play builds virtues like hopefulness. When you sit with a puzzle long enough, you're exercising hope that you'll eventually solve it. You build up perseverance just as playing sports makes us stronger for the next game. Playing with math makes us more fit to solve the next problem, even if we don't solve the current one. This is why we can dream up geometrical structures that a century later are confirmed by gravity waves. Math makes the mind its playground, and play is part of human flourishing. We all seek truth, and through seeking mathematical truth, you are cultivating virtues like rigorous thinking, that helps you make solid and compelling arguments. The practice of math builds intellectual honesty, handling ideas with integrity. And math helps us pursue beauty. The quest for beauty builds perceptive insight. When you see structures that no one else sees and brings a transcendent feeling of joy, you begin to see beautiful connections between the simple and the profound, between basic algebra and geometry or complicated ideas that power smartphones or explain the universe. Play, truth, beauty are all marks of human flourishing, as is justice. If mathematics is for human flourishing, we have to change our perception of who we think can do math and who can't. We have to rid ourselves of the idea that some people are math people and some people aren't. We don't do that with other great human endeavors like music. You don't have to be Beyonce or Beethoven to make or enjoy music. Likewise, everybody can enjoy and do math, especially if math is connected to human desires, to play, to seek truth, to pursue beauty, and speak for justice. We would teach math so differently if we thought of math as a playful sport, not a performance sport. 
We would look at math so differently if we, math, we saw math as the power to perceive the profound beauty underlying everyday things of the world. And we would look at ourselves so differently if we realized that we all had the potential to flourish through the exercise of mathematics. The prisoner building hopefulness, the 40-year-old student building perseverance, the astronomer building insight. Because mathematics is above all a vehicle for love, which is the supreme mark of human flourishing. And I'm thinking of the love between a teacher and student and their mutual commitment to grow in truth. I'm thinking of the love between friends who find joy in solving problems together. You can flourish in mathematics. And you can help your love you can love your neighbor by helping them flourish too.